Alcatraz, The Rock. 12 barren acres in the middle of San Francisco Bay. In 1934, it seemed a perfect place for an escape-proof prison for America's worst criminals. Alcatraz was America's most notorious top security prison. Escape attempts were rare. All who had tried were caught, killed, or drowned. This was the state-of-the-art institution of its time, sort of like the Titanic. You know, the Titanic's never going to sink. And I think everybody just figured that nobody's going to escape from Alcatraz. But on June the 11th, 1962, three prisoners achieved the unimaginable. Through a series of ingenious maneuvers that took more than a year to prepare, Frank Lee Morris and brothers John and Clarence Anglin broke out of their cells, out of the prison, and disappeared never to be found alive or dead. Why? In 1939, one inmate attacks the bars in a unique way. Convicted gangster Arthur Doc Barker, son of the infamous Ma Barker, is a murderer, kidnapper, and armed robber. He receives a life sentence on Alcatraz. A few years later, Doc spots a way out and begins plotting his escape. He's locked up in the D-Block isolation unit. D-Block is one of two cell blocks federal authorities fail to upgrade with the tool-resistant bars. The reason they didn't upgrade the entire cell house to the tool-proof steel was simply a matter of economics. This was an old aging building, and the money only went so far in the depths of the Depression. With a smuggled hacksaw blade, Doc and four accomplices saw their flat D-block cell bars so they can enter and leave as they want, hiding the cuts with paint. They would push them down and then were able to call through. But Doc and his gang still need to get through the round window bars. These tool-resistant bars are much stronger than the flat bars. The tool-resistant bar is nearly impossible to saw through with a standard saw. The reason? Hardness. A tool-resistant bar has more carbon, which makes the metal harder. When a bar is heat-treated and quickly cooled, the atomic structure shifts, making it more difficult for a blade to cut. Doc's solution is ingenious. He has other cons build and smuggle a bar spreader into the cell house, a crude mechanical device that uses pressure to break the bars. A bar spreader is essentially like a car jack, and as you crank it and it opens, it's going to put an enormous amount of force in the bars and spread them they would break because they're fairly brittle compared to mild steel. January 13th, 1939. Doc and his four accomplices slip out of their pre-cut cells and snap the window bars with a bar spreader. Now, outside the cell house, they head to the water and begin building a driftwood raft. Suddenly, guards spot them. Shots ring out, and four of the five men surrender. But it's too late for Doc. Doc Barker was shot in the head. He did not make it. The escape attempt is a tragic failure, but Doc and his associates found a way through the maze of cell house bars. Nearly 24 years later, a determined inmate devises another clever way through the bars. He was very ingenious in that he used some very simple tools to effect his escape. John Paul Scott is a convicted armed robber with a troubled history. Three years after Scott arrives on the rock, he is working in the Alcatraz kitchen basement. Luckily for Scott, security there is looser than in the rest of the prison. Down in the kitchen basement, they had a certain amount of time where they can work the bars. For a few minutes every day, Scott heads to the basement with a variety of tools, including a simple piece of string dipped in floor wax and covered with scouring powder. He methodically saws at one of the window bars. It's a brilliant use of available materials. It takes him more than a year, but he finally cuts through the bars. On December 16th, 1962, Scott and an accomplice, Daryl Parker, make their way through the window and down to the water with another simple tool, rubber gloves. The two men make floats and set off from Alcatraz. Parker doesn't get far, but Scott makes it to San Francisco, where he washes up on shore, half frozen. The cold got to him so badly that he felt like his legs uh, were paralyzed. Scott was thrown back in prison, another failed attempt to break out of Alcatraz. 